Hey guys, so welcome back to the second video with Arman that we are doing. And if you have missed the first video, then do check it out. We we'll leave the link below in the description. There we talked more about NUS Singapore in particular and what is it like to do undergrad in Singapore. Today's video, we are going to talk about different destinations because there are so many choices available to Indian students now. So, what are the different countries that you can consider for undergrad? education abroad now many people know about us but today we are going to talk about four other countries that can be super interesting so let's let's talk to arman and find out where all did he apply and in the end why did he go with singapore hey arman so welcome back and thanks again for coming so today I want to ask you, what are the different countries that you considered when you decided to study abroad? Sure, so I predominantly considered four countries, uh, Singapore being the first preferred option from the get-go, uh, Hong Kong as the first backup and then two other backups in terms of the UK and Canada. Uh, US didn't consider predominantly because parents thought it's too far a place and it's too expensive and slightly radical a place to be especially when you're in the malleable age of like 19, 20 when you're growing up makes sense so let's talk one by one about these countries okay I want to start with Hong Kong because that captured my attention and like I don't see many people interested in that so why did you think of Hong Kong and how did that go? sure so Hong Kong I had some seniors from school and seniors from other schools who had done extremely well in their academic pursuits in high school. They had received full scholarships on tuition, accommodation and their stay. So from a cost perspective, the proximity to India perspective and overall quality of education perspective, it sat really well. Uh, I almost started at HKU on a full scholarship, but that's a story for another day. Still tell us in brief what university did you apply to? What kind of offer did you get there and why were you not able to join? Sure, I applied to HKU and HKUST and uh, the courses were around biotechnology and business. So they have a very unique program there which was very interesting. But the offer that they gave me was a full scholarship contingent on my board marks. So they had divided it into brackets, it's confidential information. But all I can say is that with my grades, I got uh, an offer of full scholarship, full accommodation but not the, not the stipend but uh, okay. the reason of not choosing Singapore was that uh, towards the end they said that the board marks have been inflated so they wanted to review all the candidates once more which became very tricky towards the end okay and this was in 2021 okay so if they had given you a full ride you would have happily gone I would have. so I had applied for the visa I had applied for accommodation Towards the end, there was some sort of problem from their end with respect to the marks that people have, had obtained. But there were a lot of uh, interview processes at HKU. I think I, I gave like four screening interviews for admission and scholarship, different majors, different particular programs. But it's, it's, it's a great place to be because proximity to India. Uh, China is growing very fast, at least at that time it was. Hong Kong was a good place to be. Did you mention some, uh, I think, connection? With Cambridge. Oh, yeah. Cambridge, right? So, yeah. HKU has a program in engineering, I think also in other, other places, but I was focused on science and engineering, where uh, you get a direct entry into University of Cambridge right after HKU. So, interviews and um, all the entrance tests for that also happened prior to the admission. So, it was, it was a whole process. Uh, tough one, though. Got it, got it. So interesting. So this is something that Indian students can look into. Definitely, definitely. Shall we move to another country now? For sure. Let's talk about Canada. Canada. Another um, favorite destination of Indian <laughs> students. So where all did you apply and um, then sure. what happened? Mm. So I applied to University of Toronto, UBC, Waterloo and McMaster. I got a twenty thousand scholarship at twenty thousand dollar scholarship at Waterloo, twenty twenty five thousand at UBC. McMaster was also ten fifteen thousand dollars, but University of Toronto was a hundred and ten thousand dollars as scholarship. Okay, that's a that's a great amount. I think I got a I, I got my preferred majors everywhere, preferred faculties. But how most Canadian universities function is that you enter into a faculty, but depending on your grades in the first year, then you can choose a major. 
so if computer science is a very selective course you have to be in the top percentile in your first year so that you can opt for it in the second year are you saying you get admission to general bachelor's course and then your marks will determine what major you can get i can talk about university of toronto huh. in that scenario uh, i applied for life sciences but i entered into faculty of science okay i'm just taking broader names here don't right. don't take my word for it right. but you enter into a faculty and then a major mm. it's not like india where you're doing a major or not like other countries where your major is defined yeah it's still broad mm. and if your course is very selective for example molecular biology was a very selective course so i had to do very well in my common curriculum year in year in order for me to choose molecular biology in year 2 If not that, then I would have to do some other major, which was in the list. Okay. But it's not related to your board board exam marks. It's related to your year one performance yeah. there. Because you and also you said something about the class size being huge there. Right. I was in a school with, where the class size was twenty three, twenty four, very good teacher to student ratio. I wasn't very well accustomed to huge sizes. Interestingly, I did two years of online education at U of T as well. been a been a right but the class size was around 1500 students that to online with i think 63 teaching assistants so take that into consideration at bigger universities common classes are usually big hmm. so that might not be a big problem but still it has to be taken into consideration a lot of my friends chose liberal arts colleges hmm. which have an intake of 1000 people a year or like 500 a year purely because of the small class size Right. So, what were some of the factors? Like, why didn't you go ahead with Canada? Canada is far from India. That's one. Secondly, it is very cold a place. I love the sun for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a factor. Weather plays a big role. Food plays a big role in the decision you're making. I can say that confidently now. In terms of the intent of people going to Canada, it is more around settling there. I was very malleable on that front, so never took that into. very big consideration hmm. but uh, yeah it was it was nice and overall if you talk about finances like what's usually the tuition fee like in canada again in my time huh. <laughs> um overall cost of education i ran the math every cost included for university of toronto hmm. i think for a four year course it was around 2 crore okay so 50 lakhs a year is a good a estimate year. but all the universities uh, increase the cost of tuition and they outpace inflation at times so costs would have increased uh, but you were getting a scholarship there exactly but the scholarship didn't cover the full amount of tuition it covered a part of tuition got it okay so one interesting hmm. point to mention here is that university of toronto has a thing called the lester b pearson scholarship uh, hmm. they choose 37 scholars every year a friend of mine recently got it proud of her but you have to be nominated by your school first so one person from your school gets nominated then university screens you there's interview processes but only the best of the best of the best get that full ride that's without any obligations everything from books tuition accommodation travel everything is covered got it so that was about canada now let's move to uk the <laughs> uk i uh, in uk as you can apply to five places I applied to Oxford, Imperial, Manchester, UCL, and Edinburgh. I got into everywhere besides Oxford. <laughs> Oxford and Cambridge usually have some sort of a bias against Indian board applicants. They usually don't consider them like the curriculum at at par with IB or other other curriculum. So take that into consideration. To apply to Cambridge in engineering, you either have to have like five out of five in five APs. AP is the advanced placement test or you have to be in the top 2000 rank in JEE advanced it is tough but you have to plan in advance for that so you can't say ki i'll be applying to cambridge as an indian applicant but um, i bottled down on imperial i almost started there but cost of education for a 3 year course was extremely high uh, so you had to make that opportunity cost call and we decided not to go ahead with it and there's no there was any scholarship scope there uh no in uk universities at the undergrad level usually don't have scholarships ucl a friend of mine received a full scholarship but that was a need based scholarship you have to prove that you don't have the means to study there so 
but masters level at least i've seen a lot yeah, of scholarship definitely. like commonwealth british council exactly. so those are not available for undergrad not at all oh. so i'll give you another interesting stat at imperial 65% of the people are internationals the international fee is minimum four times out of a local fee local the local tuition fee for people from the uk is i think 9285 pounds i don't know why i remember that <laughs> but uh, for internationals it is in my time was 36000 dollars they have a limit of 0 to 5% inflation which they can include every year so 5% of 39 is what 542 they can, the next year the tuition fee might be 41 42000 dollars which is right, more huge, than 42 lakhs a year only in tuition fees Okay so cost was the main consideration cost as well as there's no certainty that you'd land a job right after yeah. a BSc course in biochemistry biotechnology so also the job perspective that even if you spend around 2 crore or 1 1.8 crore in 3 years there's a good chance you'd have to come back to your country Yes you get job market is certainly it's very uncertain and at at all levels so bachelor's more so I, I believe Yeah All right. So let's move to the last one, Singapore, which we have covered in detail in last video also. Right. But uh, yes, tell us your story in comparison with these countries. How did you decide upon Singapore? Right. So Singapore was always like a dream, dream place. You can look at the other video for other points. Detailed, yeah. It's it's pretty de- pretty de- detailed. But if I had to summarize, uh, extremely safe, very close to India, so you can come home very often, which is important for me at least. The culture is very similar to India. Food is also not a big problem. Vegetarians, there is some sort of problem, but different services exist. Like you, you can fit in well. Quality of education is brilliant. For my course, it's the third best in the world, right after MIT and Stanford. Even for what I want to do, it's the ideal place. So it it sat very well with me. And on the the cherry on the cake was that they offered the scholarship. Now I'm going to talk like let let's say one by one the factors which matter to us, and then let's kind of. sort these countries according to your for sure. <laughs> ranking so let's start with cost of attending these universities mm. so uh, among these four countries which one do you think is most affordable yeah I'll talk about science and engineering if you're not on a scholarship the cheapest option is hong kong okay i'm not taking cost of living into account i'm mm. just talking purely tuition because then it becomes too sure. complicated a calculation but after that is singapore Hmm. Then in most cases is Canada, then the UK. Then Not right. cheap, but you get my point. Got it. And then living conditions or how easy is it for an undergrad to adjust their uh, Indian student? An Indian student yeah. depends on your personality. Based on me, I think Singapore is, is pretty easy to fit in. That's very really closest to India. Exactly. Then I think is. Hong Kong or Canada Canada has a very decent very good number of Indians yeah. which is also good that's also true for the UK yeah so i wouldn't like to categorize yeah. but depends on your personality and what you're looking for out of the four so five years so yeah let's say singapore definitely stands out Rest, for me for me it's yeah, good it, it's closer to india closer and, to india closer to india values, uh, culture. value culture what yeah exactly what they value is yeah. merit etc etc yes from yeah. um, based on your knowledge like how would you grade these countries when it comes to the job market or uh, placement opportunities for undergrad students sure so on a personal level i'm interested in entrepreneurship i want to continue on that path if things go well uh purely in terms of support hong kong i've heard is one of the best places people don't usually consider that yeah. but hong okay. kong is a very good place for entrepreneurship uh singapore is equally equally good equally good uh in the uk there's usually a lot of conversation around tech transfer if you're part of the university ecosystem they tend to take up a lot of equity so keep that into consideration if you're in the uk uh canada i haven't really researched a lot about entrepreneurship but purely job perspective If you look at macro trends, the world is moving towards the east, India included. So the chance of a recession at all these places, especially the Asian, Singapore is much lower than the rest. Well, uh, purely in terms of support, Hong Kong I've heard is one of the best places. Singapore is equally equally good. The UK is should be much more tougher than landing a good job in Singapore. Singapore is the most recession proof out of these four, mm. in terms of developed nations. Hong Kong there's still uncertainty around their uh, uprising it's more about uh, it is a political turmoil yeah. but uh Hong Kong like Singapore is from a recession perspective it's one of the safest if i wanted to invest in a place 
personally for my growth i'd invested in singapore over the others cuz chances of landing a good job not not any job but a good job in let's say the uk is should be much more tougher than landing a good job in singapore that was very helpful arman thank you and again i will be sharing arman's contact details in in the description box below so hope this video helps you in making a better decision and let us know what else would you like to see in the comments and we'll catch up uh, with arman again uh, but don't forget to tune us on instagram as well we might be doing some short video content with arman there as well perfect uh, you can reach out to me on linkedin yes. uh, dms are, are always yes. open